Hello, my name is Bruce Frazier, and I am with you today to do one of my all-time favorite topics, which is point and figure. And uh, we are going to do a workshop. We're going to have, uh, we're going to cover a lot of ground. I get many questions about point and figure. As a matter of fact, the most common questions I get are regarding uh, point and figure uh, analysis and point and figure construction. And so I am going to, in the course of the next uh, two 30 minute segments, I'm going to attempt to answer most of those questions and resolve um, some of the uh, big questions that you have so that you can um, access the uh, point and figure tools inside of stock charts and get right to work and start to uh, have uh, tremendous success with this remarkable uh, charting uh, capability. Point and figure is one of the oldest charting methods there is. And point and figure has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. And uh, it actually precedes uh, traditional vertical bar charting. So uh, point and figure, there's a lot of things that we can do with it, but with the Wyckoff method, uh, there's a very specific approach that we're going to uh, use and I'm going to talk about over the course of the next uh, two 30 minute segments. So the uh, big difference, well, point and figure really has uh, two general approaches. One is, is that there's a vertical analysis with point and figure, and then there's a horizontal analysis or counting method for point and figure. Wyckoff uses specifically the horizontal method, and this goes back into the 1800s. And uh, stock traders in their day uh, used point and figure to uh, not only follow the trends of the market and individual stocks, but also used uh, point and figure to uh, do uh, price projections. And it is really one of the incredibly valuable attributes of point and figure is the ability to be able to estimate a uh, price objective uh, with a uh, point and figure. Uh, Richard D. Wyckoff developed it into a very specific methodology for how to take counts and how to combine your vertical bar chart analysis with your uh, point and figure analysis. And so what we're going to do is we're going to introduce that. Now, let me just say a couple of things about uh, point and figure uh, education. And that is, is that uh, Dr. Hank Pruden and I began teaching the Wyckoff graduate course back in um, well, 1990. And we started with one class, one 15 week graduate course. And what we discovered was that we couldn't really teach what we needed to teach in the point area of point and figure. And so uh, we also discovered that point and figure was difficult for most students to grasp because it's so different in so many ways from traditional vertical bar charting. And so what our solution to that problem was that we started to uh, teach a second semester class. And most of the 15 weeks of the second semester was devoted to point and figure analysis. And the uh, thing that we're not gonna do today that we spent a lot of time on and I, uh, maybe later on we can circle back and talk about this, is uh, construction, chart construction. What we're going to do is we're going to let stockcharts.com do all the work on chart construction for us, but it is very, very useful for you as a devotee of point and figure to uh, do, an, do chart construction on a few of your favorite stocks and indexes. And so uh, with that in mind, Let's move on to uh, uh, the point and figure charting method. The thing is about point and figure is that point and figure is a, um, uh, uses the X axis of the chart differently. The Y axis is still uh, the same in that price 
uh, is uh, plotted on the y-axis, the level of price, but the x-axis on a vertical bar chart is actually a constant. So it's a constant based on time. So if we're looking at daily vertical bars, it's one bar per day and every day gets a, um, uh, uh, gets an entry, gets a bar. But with horizontal point and figure counting, the uh, entries in each column are based on volatility. So the X axis is a function of volatility, not a function of time. So you could say volatility uh, in time, but you have to have an event, a, a uh, volatility event occur to go over to the next column. And it's always going to be a reversal of the, um, uh, of the uh, prior trend. And we can define that in different ways. And we're going to learn how to do that here. And so uh, just looking at what we're going to cover today, let me just, uh, just show you that we're going to talk about uh, the law of cause and effect. That's the primary law that is at work with point and figure counting. And so we define a cause in our count. And so we'll talk, a lot, we'll talk about all these things as we go. We study point and figure horizontal counting in areas of accumulation and distribution, reaccumulation and redistribution. And this is where we get our primary counts from. So we're also going to spend time on how to use the point and figure charting engine in stockcharts.com and then and, and learn all the key little tips and tricks that are necessary for uh, our horizontal analysis. And then uh, we're going to conclude with some case studies. And this will probably primarily be in the second half hour. And we're going to do uh, 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 point figure case studies that uh, are going to help to illustrate uh, the, the concepts that we're talking about. Okay. So here we can see that this is a, an example of our charting engine. And so we can see here that uh, the a point and figure chart, this is Boeing. Uh, it's not important. The chart itself is not important at this point. We just want to see the primary tools that we're going to use for uh, uh, the uh, construction of the chart. So let me, I'm going to, uh, let me get my tool here the way I want it. You have to forgive me because I'm not, it's not something that I uh, do a lot of. Okay, here we go. Good. Okay. So uh, here we have uh, the construction. We can see that up here, this is where we uh, see the uh, construction uh, methodology that we use. So we're using daily data. We're using traditional scaling and a one box reversal methodology. And so these are the columns that our analysis takes place in. And so in the case of one box reversal, so we have a kind of a unique situation in that the one box method has to have at least two entries in it. And so you'll get used to this, but this is uh, something that people uh, do have confusion about. And that is, and the good part is, is that there's a number of uh, point and figure charting engines that don't do this properly for the Wyckoff method. The beauty of stockcharts.com, which I think has a phenomenally good point and figure uh, charting engine, is that it does it correctly automatically. And so we can see here that there has to be, with one box reversal, it's just a, uh, it's a standard thing, uh, is that you have to have two entries in each column. And so here you can see uh, X's are always uh, up uh, entries and zeros are down entries. So you can see here that at the area of 134 for Boeing right here, we have, we went, we went down, we can see two, two down entries and up, which was an X and then two downs, which is an O and then it wanted to go up again. So automatically we will move, once we have a one box reversal, one, in this case, one box is two points. 
because we're over 100. And so scaling is really important, and we're going to talk more about that later on. But here we can see we're going down. We started by going up, and then it went up one point, and then Boeing uh, turned back down. And so because we have to have the minimum rule of two entries in every column for one box, we can see here that it went up. I'm going to clear this so that you can see it better is that you can see that there's an up and then immediately Boeing turned back down again. Well, because it turned down after only one entry in that column, which is that X, we continue to in that same column with two down uh, uh, movements, which is two points and two points. And it went right down to 132. It started at 136 and then it went down to 132. Well, now we have three entries, which fulfills the minimum requirement of two entries in a column, one box reversal. And now it went up again. It went from 132 back up to 134. And so we now can move over and up one. And here we are, we have an entry of one and then look what happens. There's two, four, six points of movement downward because we only had one entry in that column we can we mark the down six point down move with um, zeros in that same column, and then look what happens. We have an up two points, a down two points fulfills the minimum requirement. We have an up two points, down two points, and then we have so we're on a down here, which is a zero. Now I'll describe the uh, the numbering here in a minute. And then we turn around and we go back up and look what happens. It, it turns up and it goes up two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve points. So it went from 128 to 140. And, uh, and it does it all in one column without any pullback. So if there was any pullbacks of two points, we'd have to put a down entry in, but there is none. And so up we go and then there's a three point reversal Three points, it meets the minimum requirements of two entries in a column, so they're all down. And then it goes up again, continues the uptrend, and goes to right to 148. Okay, so that is the one interesting convention with, with one box reversal. Two entries in a column. If you ever see a point and figure chart with one entry in a column, over time, you know that that indicates that it's not proper construction for Wyckoff. And it's not just Wyckoff. The old, ancient old point and figure conventions and methodology back in the day used this uh, two point uh, convention for one box reversal. So just keep that in mind. Now, the next thing is, is that we have the other, okay, so let's just uh, summarize one other thing about one box, is that we tend to use one box reversal method for uh, daily to line up with daily bar charts. So this is sort of a rule of thumb. So daily bar chart, normally the, uh, the one box reversal method of point and figure will line up well with one box reversal vertical charts. Three box reversal lines up well with weekly vertical bar charts. And so three box lines up with, uh, with weekly one box lines up well with daily as a general rule. Now, let's talk a little bit more about uh, charting conventions. The other thing is, is that we, when we're doing daily or weekly vertical bar charts and we wanna make a point figure of that, we always, always, always use the daily period, daily period. We do not use weekly for, uh, drawing uh, point figure charts. We always use daily. What we do is we change the time period with the number of points of reversal. So three box takes um, more reversal to, to go to the next column than a one box. And so the, uh, we do always do daily. We always do the, the type is high low. Uh, the, uh, this duration is something that we can play with to see more data. 
this, the size just gives you the size of the chart itself. So you can make them bigger uh, to, to look at, but you don't get more data. You just get a bigger chart, which is nice. Uh, the uh, other thing is, is the months. Here we can see hide months. Well, here you can see these numbers, number five, number six, number seven. Well, these are the months of the year. And so five is the month of May, seven is the month of July. Well, look what happens. Here's September. So this is the first entry in the month of September. And so all of this data here is all data that was derived, created in the month of September. And then look what happens. We have an A here. Well, A, because you, uh, the charts do, do not allow for or don't look good with uh, uh, the number 10, 11, or 12 in the box, what we do is we put in a letter. So the letter A is October, the letter B is November, and the letter uh, C is December. And then we go back to one and start the new year. And so this is a way for you to keep track of time because remember that this is a function of volatility. Some, so, so look at look at the, number of entries that took place in the month of March over here, number three to number four. So you have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns that appears in the month of March. And then look at how many you have in the month of April. You only have three. So it, cause, because we go from April to May right here. So you can see that these charts are a function of volatility, not a function of time. Okay, so we will move on. And uh, here we wanna go to uh, the weekly. And so weekly are three box, it's not really weekly. So look here, daily data. So we're using daily data. We're using high-low method. And the difference is, is that our scaling convention is that it's three box reversal. What this means is, is that we have to have a minimum of three entries uh, in a column to turn the direction of uh, the, it, it move over to a new column and turn up or turn down. So we can see here that most all of these are more than three. So again, this is two, uh, two box or two point scaling. So we can see here that there's a decline that went from 180 down to 164. And so this, this is a, a big decline where we had four, we had eight entries. We have to have a minimum of three to turn down. So we were going up, we went up five boxes and then turned down. Well, the, the standard method for plotting these is we go, we go over and down one. So we're at uh, 182 and we go over and down. So it takes a movement below 180, could go to 179 or 179 and an eight, eighth or say 179.10, something like that. But until it goes to 178, you don't have an entry into the next box down. So it, here, one, 182 to 180 right here, it's over and down two points, and then Boeing just kept going down. And so it went down a total of eight entries downward. It then turned back up. It has to go up at least three, one, two, three, to go over and up. So you, you will have an entry that will be over and up one box, and then one, two, three. As soon as you get that third entry in that column, now you can, uh, you can make this column a new column of up uh, Xs. And so in this case, we had a movement of six entries or two times six, 12 points up. And so we can see that this is the uh, basic convention for how to do a three box reversal. Three box reversal is going to give us much bigger structures. And when we count across the horizontal method, we're going to get much bigger counts with the three box reversal method. Let's see if we can find one here. Look here, here's a three box reversal, uh, requires at least three entries in each column. You can see here there was a minimum of three down. So it went 
December C went, then it went down three. So it's over and down one and then down three zeros. And then uh, it turned back up and now it's gone up three uh, as of the, this charting. So you can see that that's the minimum requirement. In most cases, it's more than this. So you can see it's a rather large move that's required to be able to, um, to move on. Okay. Now, we're going to use uh, the vertical charts. We're, we're going to uh, take our counts based on our vertical chart analysis. And so we have, uh, in this case, we have two schematics. And the two schematics are uh, a spring, this accumulation with a spring, and this is a, an accumulation with a last point of support in phase C. We take our counts from the uh, last point of support, which is the last pullback to a higher low before it jumps up and out of the accumulation area. And then we count across. We tend to count in segments, but that's uh, for later. And so we count across from the last point of support here over to the selling climax here. And so we will, we will find these spots on our point and figure chart and we will count across and we'll count each column. I'm going to show you how to do that. On this one, we can see a last point of support here and we're counting across to the selling climax as a general rule. So we will take smaller counts to be conservative. But this is the, uh, this is the, the analysis that we do on the vertical chart and then we transfer that analysis over to the, um, to the point figure chart. And so uh, here down here, this is where the blog where these schematics were published so that you have access to them. You can go right to the blog and you can look at that. All right, so let's uh, move on now and do an example. And so here we have uh, an index. So we can do point figure on indexes, we can do them on commodities, we can do them on individual stocks, ETFs, whatever it is it's trading. And generally, you just want to make sure that there's enough liquidity in the instrument to be able to uh, have a good market. So in this particular case, this is a pretty simple one. But what we're doing is we're going from the uh, uh, last point of support. And this was from an actual blog that we did on point and figure. And we counted over from the last point of support on the Dow Jones over to the selling climax, just as we discussed. And here we're looking at a daily chart. And so you can see there's a tremendous amount of volatility here as the space is being made. Well, volatility is the precondition for building count on a point figure chart. And so over here, we'll come back over and look at distribution very briefly. But what I wanna do is I want you to focus on this area right here. And uh, you can see that it's a uh, short period of time. It's six weeks, but let's go over and look at the count that we get. Well, this is a three box reversal method and the uh, counting uh, scale, we're using traditional scaling. And so the stock charts engine is uh, using 50 point increments for scaling on the, uh, the Dow Jones industrials in the area of 15 to 17,000. These are all uh, 50 point every one of these increments. So each one of these boxes, now look at this. This is a three box reversal and look at this. Each one of these boxes is 50 points down. So it ta it's, there's a coarseness to point figure that's different than a vertical chart. So you're getting different kind of information. Well, look at this decline. Big selling climax, it's just a dramatic drop. And then a base is built. And so we count from the, L the last point of support we, and we always count from a down column on accumulation. We always count from the last down column, which is where the LPS is. We find that, and then we count over, in this case, to the selling climax, we count the columns. So we see here that we have 15 columns across that we've counted. We have three box reversal method, 50 points per box. So the math is, is that it's 15 times three, we always, count the columns by the reversal method, 
So 15 columns times uh, three box reversal times 50 points, which is 2,250 points of fuel in the tank for uh, a, a rally. And so this count takes us up. You can see we take two counts. These are important concepts for you to know. The, the last box down in the LPS or is uh, called the count line. So this count line is at 15,950. So we count from the count line across to get our 15 columns. And then we uh, calculate our 2,250 points of upward potential. So we can see that it turns up and dramatically moves up. Look at this move. It goes up, each one of these being 50, with only one intervening correction of more than three boxes at 50 points. So 150, in this case, it went 50, 100, 152, 250 point pullback after it broke out above the uh, accumulation area. It backed up and then it went up into a buying climax. Now, this is on a shorter scale. But here's a buying climax and look at the target range. We take two, with the count from two places. We take it from the count line, we add the 2250 to the count line at 15950 and we count also take it from the low at 15400. And so we have a, a range, we're always identifying a target range. And so in this case, it goes 17650 at the, from the low and it goes 18,150 or 18,200 uh, from the count line. And so this becomes our range and then look what happens. So we get into the range of our count, the fuels used up in the tank here and distribution forms. Okay, so let's move on. So uh, uh, I counted a small distribution and this is what we will often do is we will count a minimum uh, take a minimum count and then we'll expand it out and you'll see that I expanded this count out and made it bigger and so here is our distribution count same concept but what we're doing is after a sign of weakness we look for a last point of supply a rally into a last point of supply and that comes right here at 17750 we count across we get the same number of columns so this is a giant trading range 15 columns, three box reversal, 50 points, gives us the same 2,250 point count. And we count it from the count line and from the high. So that's 17,750, 17,950. And we count across here, flag our count. This is called flagging the count where we, we draw the line down and we put these across. Okay, so then we have an objective of 15,700. This is a, again, this is a, a range, uh, 15,700, 15,500. Well, look where we went. We went to a low of 15,450.56. We went exactly to the 15,500 low. Now, here's the thing. If we had gone to 15,449 or 15,449,990, or 15,449,90, we would have added another box down and we would have overshot it by one, which is nothing. That's still a really good hit. And so we can see here that we went exactly to the uh, low objective that this just distribution laid out. And so it doesn't always work out to perfection like that, but our interest is not in getting perfect counts. Our interest is identifying the amount of potential and then you can see here that when it broke down, it attempted to rally back up into the range of the distribution. It couldn't do it and continued on. Look at this phenomenal uh, potential that was in the, uh, this downward tr trade, just as there was phenomenal potential in this upward trade. And the point and figure chart identified uh, really well the potential that existed in that. Okay, so now I have a case study for you. So uh, we're going to take a look at Disney, but we're going to stop here and we're going to pick this up in our next half hour.